More than 90% of Americans are still living under stay-at-home orders. That might change with the president's new reopening. But it's meant to spread the halt and halt the spread of the virus, excuse me. But the economic devastation being caused by these lockdowns may be creating a new pandemic, one of mass anxiety and helplessness. I don't have any income coming in. I don't get any food stamps. Um, <clears throat> so it's just hard to get you know, any help right now. I have a 12 year old son at home and stuff like that. And with the whole coronavirus going on, it makes me stress more. So when I stress more, I smoke more. Because I'm pregnant with twins. If we were to get evicted, I don't know what we would do. Now this is heartbreaking. And you hear these stories all day long. Now we have 22 million people out of work and millions of business owners are facing insolvency. So how many of our fellow Americans are feeling stressed and panicked like the women you just saw? Joining me now is Dr. Phil McGraw, psychologist, author, and host of Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil, thanks so much for being on with us. Uh, I think this this isn't part of the calculation um, of you know the, the bending the curve and all of those graphs that we see, and they're they're very interesting. I'm not saying they're not important, but those comments aren't taken into consideration when we look at those graphs. Well, Laura, they never are. And thank you for having me on. And thank you for giving a voice to this because it's so very important. This is invisible. I can't show you an x-ray of depression. I can't show you an x-ray of anxiety. But the fact of the matter is, the longer this lockdown goes on, the more vulnerable people get. And it's like there's a tipping point. There's a point at which people start having enough problems in lockdown that it will actually create more destruction and actually more death across time than the actual virus will itself. 250 people a year die from poverty. And the poverty line is getting such that more and more people are going to fall below that because the economy is crashing around us. And they're doing that because people are dying from the coronavirus. I get that. But look, the fact of the matter is we have people dying. 45,000 people a year die from automobile accidents, 480,000 from cigarettes, 360,000 a year from swimming pools. But we don't shut the country down for that. But yet we're doing it for this. And the fallout is going to last for years because people's lives are being destroyed. And Dr. Phil, just conversations with, with business owners who I've gotten to know over the years. Um, I, I come from a family that owned a small business, a car wash. And so I'm always, I'm all, my heart is always with the people who get, you know, frankly screwed. <clears throat> I hate that word screwed in situations like this. But it, 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 the restaurateurs who their, their employees are their families. That's their family. And they've, they've had the same employees for 30 <clears throat> years. And these are grown men in tears. And, and they're like, I, 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 I can't sleep. I can't. <clears throat> and these are, these are grown men who, uh, and, well, and I've never seen this. I've never witnessed this before. Ever. Well, I've talked to them before, and of course, this happened, and when it happened, they got no warning. Some of them had just received huge orders of perishable foods. They didn't even have time to give it away, and they have these 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 people that have worked for them for 20 or 30 years, and they can't afford to keep them on, and they can't do takeout at a lot of these restaurants. They're not geared for that, and so people are just at home, and of course, it's a perfect storm, Laura, because here you've got people that are in isolation. Isolation, that creates problems. Loneliness actually creates problems. People that suffer from loneliness, mm -hmm. they become 29% more likely to have coronary artery disease, 32% more likely to have strokes or die, 40% more likely to have dementia if they're in that age group. So it's not just that it's psychological, their bodies actually start breaking down. So we think we're protecting people's lives by keeping them locked up. You keep them locked up long enough, there's a paradoxical effect. You actually destroy more lives than you do by letting them go out and protect themselves and opt into their lives to fight for what they believe in. Yeah, and Dr. Phil, I couldn't, I could not agree more. I've been, I mean, I, I, I have not slept during this just because I'm so worried about our country. I'm blessed because I, I have a job and I'm very blessed, but I'm, I'm so worried about the working people in our country and the impact of being <clears throat> out of school for children. And there hasn't been that much of a focus on that. Uh, Sweden kept their primary school kids in. Uh, they thought that was the right thing to do. And, you know, we'll see how the numbers all turn out there. But the risk that this poses to children, watch. 
they could just be totally blowing off school, not talking to anyone and just, you know, numbing out on YouTube videos all day long because they're anxious and worried and depressed and they're trying to distract themselves. And no one would know because they're not going to reach out for help. Dr. Phil, how can parents make sure this doesn't happen to their kids where it's veg well, out time? That's, that, that's a real problem, Lauren. I'm glad you brought it up because attendance and actual completion of work across the country has dropped about 40%. Parents are not trained as teachers. I mean, we've got, we've got so many parents where they have three or four children in three or four different grades, and they have one device, one laptop or computer at home, if that, and they're trying to run three or four curricula when they don't have the training to do it once. And so that's a real problem. And they're doing it while they've got this hammer hanging over their head that the economy's crashing around their ears. They don't know they're going to be able to pay their rent. There were 10,000 people mm -hmm. that showed up in San Antonio over the weekend for the food bank. People that used to be volunteering at the food bank are now in line getting food at the food bank. No. 10,000 people. And we've. Uh, and <laughs> these are people that don't want to be there. They don't no, need to be there. No, no. Now, we, we have so many questions. Our viewers, Dr. Phil, have been sending in questions all day long. All right, Dr. Phil, we asked our viewers what they really wanted to know um, <clears throat> during the coronavirus uh, lockdown. A lot of mental health issues, a lot of concerns. Our first question comes from Val, and she wrote, My 89-year-old mom is showing sudden signs of delirium. Can you offer some practical <clears throat> suggestions on how to assist her with this quarantine? She's normally active socially, shopping, hair salon, dining out, etc. <clears throat> Dr. Phil. Well, I can, and I say this for, for Val's mother and also for everybody in this quarantine. You need to maintain your routine. You don't want to become a, a couch potato and a slug. You want to get up every morning, take a shower, fix your hair, put on your makeup, get dressed, groom yourself just like you do whenever the world is open. Because let me tell you, that door is going to open soon, and it's kind of like the pace car uh, at a NASCAR race. When that pace car pulls off the track, you want to be at full speed. Let everybody else be looking for their keys and figuring out what they're going to do. You want to be up to full speed. You need to, you need to have your mind busy. You need to be working and, and doing things every day. Don't be sitting around because particularly uh, elderly people, their mind will begin to wander and they will not become cognitively active. You've got to be mm -hmm. cognitively active. You've got to be cognitively agile. This really has mm -hmm. an effect on people neuropsychologically. I've been talking with my colleague, Dr. Marty Greenberg, and we're very concerned, even about people in their 30s and 40s, losing a step cognitively by being in quarantine. Yeah, and ki kids, go back into the kids have to be hearing from their teachers at the same time every day mm -hmm. as if they would in school on video. You've got to do something. All right, question from Don. What can people do to avoid confrontation with other members of the household since everyone is forced to stay home together? Dr. Phil, might be last question. You know, that's a tough thing. You've really got to give each other space. And, it, and I mean space mentally, emotionally, physically. And before you judge somebody, you need to realize you're probably a jerk too. So just back off and give everybody some space. This will end soon. We probably shouldn't have ever started this, but just realize there's a light at the end of the tunnel. We need to get out of this and get back to work. Major depressive disorder costs $210 billion a year in America, and we're wow. feeding it now when we don't need to be. Now, and of course, domestic abuse hotlines showing uh, uptick, uh, yeah. concern about uh, abuse of children, uh, opioids, all the rest. Dr. Phil, we could do a whole hour with you, but you have your own show. So thank you so much uh, for being on. Really enjoyed it and really helped a lot of people. Well, Laura, thank you for giving a voice to this and keep doing what you're doing because you're keeping people active and you're keeping the pressure on. Thank you I'll, for doing it. I'll do it. Thanks so much, Dr. Phil.